Hello, everyone, and welcome to Saturn Returns with me, Kagi Dunlop. This is a podcast that aims to bring clarity during transitional times where there can be confusion and doubt. It's really important for people to be able to connect to their own intuition, to see the power of inside themselves versus the fact that they think that they need to go to a guru you know you have your access to your intuition it's already there it's here to help you especially during you know what we're experiencing right now in this episode of Saturn Returns I'm joined by Natalie Miles who describes herself as a spiritual mentor and psychic medium her mission is to help us learn to reactivate and trust our intuition and she has written a book called You Are Intuitive. Now, I was introduced to Natalie through Ruby Warrington, who you guys may remember came on season one of the podcast to talk about being sober curious and has since become a friend of mine. And anyway, she uh, put me in touch with Natalie and said that she might make for a good guest of this season. And I definitely wanted to do something around intuition. It's a massive theme, massive theme for me over like the last couple of years during my own Saturn Returns journey. And a lot of you have actually requested that I do an episode around this. So it was very perfect that she got in contact and I absolutely loved the book and I loved this conversation. I feel in many ways throughout my, I guess my 20s, I kind of stopped listening to my intuition. I think that naturally I had quite a strong Uh, intuitive guidance system and then I don't know I just kind of disconnected from it I definitely think that that was connected to the lifestyle I was living um, perhaps being inauthentic and not really being truthful to myself and it was really over the last couple of years that I started to get these really massive intuitive hits and that was very much aligned with Uh, my sobriety because obviously I well it's my belief that that sort of numbs and dulls it And we kind of go into that. We also talk about how there's an ancestral wound going on. And by that, I mean, women historically have been disconnected from their intuition because it's been seen as dangerous. It's dangerous for them. It's dangerous for society, women in their power. Um, And just to explain a little bit about the start of the call, we, I always have issues with technology. Something, apparently, according to to Natalie, it's something... uh, in me about my energy, which makes a lot of sense because it is it is like a comedy sometimes. And obviously with what I do, everything is kind of around technology, which makes it slightly challenging. But we did have a few hurdles getting on the call, but we managed to. And I really love this conversation. So I hope you learn something from it. And I hope that it helps you in accessing your own intuitive power. Just before we get into this and start our wrestling with tech, here is Nora, our astrological guide for the season. In astrology, generally the intuition is determined by certain placements in the chart, but the technicalities of it don't matter because how this ties in with Saturn return is that when we're going through our Saturn return or the maturity of Saturn, which happens at the age of 36, and Saturn return happening between 28 and 30, At these ages where Saturn is really being prominent in our lives, um, it forces us to recognize our natural abilities, but also to recognize the authority within us. More often than not, this would have been a little voice inside of us that would have told us, no, that is not the right relationship. No, this is not what you want to do with your career. No, this is not the kind of like place that you want to live in, but you'll ignore it. You'll want to please society rather than just um, please our true selves. So Saturn return comes in and then it obliges us to give attention to that voice, which is our intuition. And that's exactly when things fall apart. If we're not, if we have been um, ignoring our intuition, if we've been ignoring this gut feeling and truly our inner father, our inner mother, our inner authority, um, things will fall apart. And the big, big lesson that we learn during Saturn return is that we should listen to our intuition. If I had listened to this, then now during Saturn return, I'll be reaping rewards. I would not be facing this kind of destruction and difficulties that I've that I've been facing. Truly, honestly, if we if we all would listen to our intuition and all be true to ourselves, we would be having 
you know, maybe not the easiest life, but we would be having a more authentic life and a, and a life that is more rewarding, which is exactly what Saturn is teaching us. Through, and it was weird because as I like put um, sign up to your link, it wouldn't access my microphone. And I was like, but I've given all the permissions for that. And I went into all my back end of my system. And I was like, oh, this is so weird. I normally when this stuff shows up for me like this, I, um, I know it's part of like a client session. Like I know it's part of the messages and the guidance that wants to come through, if that makes sense. In what so sort of like, capacity? The messages for you around it were like, you're in this like new space of communicating your truth, like more than ever before. And you're about to like step into some like brand new ways of like how you're showing up in the world. And there's just some like energetic blocks around your voice and using your voice in these new ways of oh, what yeah. wants to come through in this new phase of chapter of your life that you're going into. And so it shows up in like mini blocks of technology because it's part of that like subconscious of you kind of having mini blocks and fears around using your voice in new ways. Wow, that is wild. But yeah, I mean, it was it was like crazy what just happened before this call. But it's quite common with me. Yeah, because you're so sensitive and you are highly, highly, highly intuitive. So the more that you step into your intuition, it's like this whole energy surge there's like brand new energy that is like flowing through your body and it does it breaks technology like because it's on it's honestly like a comedy because it seems to be whenever it's something that I have a lot of like an, a, a, a strong energetic response to or something that's like mm -hmm. important in some way whether it be like this conversation or whether it would be me recording music in a studio like it's exhausting for everyone involved because there's always hurdles in actually being able to have the conversation but anyway here we are we managed to make it are. work we made it and when that happens to you in the in the future I always like make sure that I'm really grounding my energy beforehand so actually like consciously doing a grounding I mean sometimes I even just ask um, please let this flow with love, ease and grace and just set the intention that I want it to move with love, ease and grace and, and actually ask her for all obstacles to be removed. Okay, I think I need to start doing that. <laughs> but um, thank you for joining me. I'm really excited. We're finally having this conversation. So when you say you get messages and stuff, because you speak in your book a lot about like spirit guides and everything, is, and this is something that you have been aware of as a gift from quite a young age like how does how strongly does it come through um yeah really strong I experience messages through um hearing seeing knowing um feeling so I yeah I have a blend of all of them and and it's just been over time that I know when my spirit guides are communicating with me you know we have this spirit team but also just your own intuition you know we're all intuitive we're all born intuitive and once we begin to realize and notice how our intuition shows up for us and how we are receiving messages every single day it, it just there's something that is really empowering inspiring absolutely because um Intuition has been, been like such a huge theme for me personally. You know, as you discuss in your book, we really are out of alignment with being able to hear that voice. And so I, what I really want to achieve from this conversation is to set like an intention is how people can access their own intuition. And can we bring it back to the very beginning, how you mm. got into this work and yeah, just start from... Stop yeah, <laughs> it's been quite the journey. Um, I first went to a psychic circle in the UK with my mom back when I was like 16. And um, that was the first time that I ever shared a message with someone or connected to the energy and was like, wow, I can do this. I was like, this is really cool. But I... Um, the, the shame of it like I was really worried about what people were going to think of me friends 
boyfriends, partners. So it all really went into kind of shutdown um, for me. Um, in my 20s, I um, started a career in film, um, but it was something that was very much hidden because I didn't want people to think I was weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and then during my Saturn return, which was um, a wild time, um, (laughs) (laughs) it was um, when you're in the thick of it, it was, yeah, not not the funnest of times, but I call it, it was part of my spiritual reactivation, um, a reactivation to get back reconnected to my intuition, ins and outs with a long-term relationship, um, I was mugged. Um, I had multiple houses that I were in were flooded. Um, cars driving. Shit was, shit was hitting the fan, basically. Shit, shit was hitting the fan. <laughs> um, and then it literally, it wasn't until I actually, I, I now live in Canada. I now live in Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. And I decided that I, you know, I got this intuitive hit that I needed to move to Canada. I needed to leave the UK. And it was here that in the midst of being alone away from friends family the usual setup that I had I reconnected to my intuitive gifts and the spirit were really loud and clear we're like you need to be doing this work it's really important and so yeah here I am and it's been a journey but it feels like who I am and what I'm about and what my mission is yeah, because I love it. You describe it as that the universe will throw pebbles on your path. Mm-hmm. And if you're not listening, it will throw rocks. And then if you're still not listening, it'll throw like boulders. Yeah. So I think that that is such a an amazing way of describing actually what a lot of people experience on their, during their Saturn return. M- myself included was like, you know, I may have had a lot of experiences that my intuition was, you know, trying to speak to me and I was just ignoring it and then it was really through my Saturn return journey that I suddenly was like oh wow that that's painful when I ignore it now so I think it's a really you know it's a really crucial and necessary pain that I think we have to go through and you discussed this also that like you have not have to but it seems to be there is you know a correlation between one's like spiritual reactivation or awakening or whatever we want to call it and something that happens in one's life that's hugely disruptive yeah and can seem as a loss and can seem that there's something being taken away from you and it's also this part of especially within the spiritual wellness world the way we can kind of focus on this like love and light intuition or this focus that you know oh I'm having a spiritual awakening and it's like love and the clouds part and everything's going to be amazing and actually it's a time where we're really forced to look at our shadow. We're forced to look at what hurts and the pain and the suffering um, and what our shadow parts of ourselves to learn from them. And, you know, quite often, you know, and society, show, you know, tells us that we shouldn't be looking at this part of us, that we should just kind of push it aside and focus on the good things. But actually, those shadow parts are such deep transformational parts of our learning and healing journey. And it's so important to look at them. Totally. Because I also think, you know, society, like you say, and and especially we see an example of it through social media is like, you know, don't acknowledge the shadow, the, the less attractive parts of ourselves. And then also there's been a conversation that I've had a lot recently with people around the idea of the feminine again that it's this like very light very soft energy mm-hmm. and then then some people are come back being like no the feminine can be like dark you know it can be <sighs> mysterious it's powerful it's potent it's not like flowers and rainbows and it's the same with this the sort of spiritual bypass of like the self-help movement that's like manifest your dream life and you know light and positivity mm-hmm. and everything and it's It's dangerous because it's an unregulated world. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that if you don't, if you don't have your own intuitive, if you aren't tapped into your own intuition, it's hard to decipher what is worthy of following and what isn't. And because you can market things in such a, a way through the realm of social media and stuff, I think it's like a very murky area. And we'll kind of get into that because it also just plays into the idea that I think a lot of people think that this stuff is like quite woo woo and 
and evil, the devil's work, like you say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's all, it's just all really interesting conversation because I, it's my belief. It's all about personal sovereignty and it's about tapping into your own inner compass. So you can make these decisions for yourself and you can't take advantage of people's vulnerability. And the intention always has to be about empowering people for, yeah. to do the things for themselves, like not to take away that responsibility from them. Big time and acting out of authenticity and integrity and using our intuition to practice discernment. There's so much Mm. going on in the world right now where we don't know what is real and what's not and the news that we're reading and there's a lot of misinformation. And so it is about how can we practice discernment. And I love what you shared about the feminine, Kagi, just saying about, you know, women are wild, women are fierce. And it is patriarchy that has been telling women that they aren't those things, but Mm. it's the the realization and it is connected to our intuition around, you know, women um, being in their power is it's, um, you know, which it's a threatening thing. That's part of the why there were the witch trials, but there is this kind of energy right now where women are, realizing their own sovereignty and they're realizing their own power and they're realizing their own intuition and what that means um and it's uh yeah, yeah it's it's beautiful to witness because you talk so beautifully about it in your book would you mind explaining to the listeners a bit about you know the trials of witches and how how that happened in terms of creating a system where they wanted to oppress people and keep people down and you know why that yeah. in turn meant that our power was taken away yeah i mean with we all hold the ancestral shame of the um generations that have come before us not just the women but the men as well we were told to see the power of outside of ourselves in god or religion but that meant that people's own personal practices around intuition were taken away were banned um the witch trials happened where people were killed and murdered and many intuitives went into hiding and then you also bring in um, colonialism into that as well. So um, indigenous people of color, they were also oppressed and they're also their connection to their spirituality and how they connect to their intuition, their rituals and their practices were taken away from them as well mm-hmm. um, by white people. And then you throw in um, religion as well. I have a section in the book called It's the Devil's Work. And it, it you know, it, we've been told so often that this work was, um, will bring in the devil, that it's going to bring in um, negative energy. Um, and that is, again, it's part of that societal um, programming. But um, I, will, that- I will, sorry to interrupt you, but I will say for that part is that it can, I think there is an argument that, I do understand for that because like I said, it's so unregulated Mm -hmm. and there are some people out there sort of charlatans that are practicing things. Perhaps they have some sort of uh, gift, but it it isn't always coming from the right place. And I think like, and also to touch on something you said earlier, some people have mentioned to me about, you know, because there's obviously clearly, this movement that's happening now where people are, you know, this stuff is hitting the mainstream. But some people have said to me, you know, it's being reclaimed in the wrong way. So practices that don't culturally necessarily belong to us are being practiced not necessarily in the right way and not necessarily with the right intention, you know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? very much so. It's what I call conscious intuition. It's about you know cultural appropriation is rife in the spiritual world right now and it's about looking at um where do those practices come from are they part of your lineage um if they're not part of your lineage it's time to kind of look at your ancestry your lineage and look at you know the practices that came from them and also it's about being invited in and learning from people from that um, cultural lineage that you would like to use. You you just need to look at now um, white sage bundles being Mm -hmm. sold um, in high street stores. 
And it's like, that's an indigenous practice that was also um, banned. Like they were banned from using that as a practice. And so for us to be take their um, ritual, to take their practice and for people to be making um, high street stores, to be making money from it. Yeah, it's icky. It feels, it's not right. And so, you know, as there are shady doctors and shady lawyers and shady builders, um, there are also shady healers Um, healers. and it's rife and so that is why it's also really important for people to be able to connect to their own intuition to see the power of inside themselves versus the fact that they think that they need to go to a guru um or a teacher to find yeah their own inner power and their and their own inner truth which is what I'm sharing is like you know, you have your access to your intuition. It's already there. It you, it's it's here to help you, especially during you know what we're experiencing right now. So I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about everything that's going on in the world in terms of basically right now, the world has sort of shifted on its axis. I actually don't really like. I kind of make a bit of a ban of talking about it on this podcast because I like this to be a space where people can. Uh, separate themselves from that because I think that the way we are consuming media full stop was a problem before but it's just so much worse now and creating this like constant anxiety and fear even if it's subconscious it's manifesting in not very nice ways for people I have this like tendency when stuff like this happens this like natural thing where I just create like an energetic cocoon I it just doesn't really phase me I just shut Mm -hmm. off from like all the stuff that's going to be fear inducing and I'm just like how do I feel about it like and just get on with the things that I can control it's yeah it's like it's what I call um energetic self-sovereignty I would also share that I think we all have a responsibility to know what is happening in Mm -hmm. our planet so like how do we find the balance between knowing what's happening in the news, knowing what's happening in social media, mm-hmm. but choosing our response and being in charge of our own energy around it? It's like noticing when your energy has been like hooked into social media or the fear is coming up or there's like that addictive scrolling that sometimes happens mm-hmm. that, um, and really um, practicing it as, you know, deleting an app off your phone, only saying like, I'm only going to, be on here for like 15 minutes, having the conversations um, with your friends and family. If there are particular friends and family that are, you know, keep talking about the same thing about the news or the same, um, you know, the same rhetoric, whether we're talking about politics, whether we're talking about COVID, um, it, it's it's an element of you setting boundaries. And, and it's also that element where, we we've gone into future projecting mode a lot of our fear and anxiety is connected to the fear of the unknown a fear of what is going to happen i talk about this as like how we can you know be in the present moment you know in healing in the present moment intuition in the present moment and bringing it back into the here and now and asking ourselves like what do I need to know today? How can I be in my body today and really bringing it back to the present? And I don't want to sound like doom and gloom, but this this is the start of the spiritual reactivation for the collective. This is going to be a, a, a longer process over the next five to six years. There is going to be a lot more seemingly um, more chaotic change as the power structures Um, and the structures of our society begin to change. Mm -hmm. And so that is why we are going to need to have the tools of our intuition and being kind of learning how to practice discernment and being in the present moment and and that energetic self-sovereignty so that we that we so we can feel grounded and safe and anchored versus kind of spiraling into that kind of future fear projecting mode all the time. 100%. And what are some of the tools that people can do for protecting themselves energetically and harnessing that intuition? And I'd also like to go into being able to decipher between, you know, the ego, the fear and the intuition, because I think that's something that people will find really interesting and and tricky to navigate, myself included, because sometimes I'm like, I don't know who's talking right now. 
Yeah. Why don't I jump into that first? So, um, so for, you know, how, how on earth do you know whether it is the fear based voice, the ego based voice or your intuition and your intuitive voice? For me, I describe that, um, the intuitive voice normally comes from the back of the head. It will feel like the voice will come in from the back of the head. It will feel, um, grounding. It will feel calming. It might feel like your best friend giving you a piece of advice and then it will leave. It will come in into your mind and then it will go versus the ego fear-based mind. It normally comes from the front of the head. Mm -hmm. It will feel like chatter. And instead of it coming in and leaving, it will like whirl around in your front of your head. And it will just, you know, it's that internal dialogue that we have with ourselves when we're listening to the fear kind of whirl around in our mind. That is a great way um, to just de- decipher between it. The intuitive voice might not always make sense which yes. is tricky and because we want logic we want something to hold on to totally. and so the intu- so the intuitive voice might feel like oh this doesn't make any sense but it feels really good it feels right in my body it feels like this is my kind of next course of action and the ego and fear based voice also, it, it has a time agenda a lot of the time. Like, you're like, I want an answer now and I need this answer now. The ego and fear-based voice can also be like, I should do this. I must do this versus um, it being kind of more of an energy of of surrender of what truly wants to come in. And just noticing how it feels in your body. Like when the ego or the fear-based voice comes in, it can feel like, it can give you anxiety. It can feel really heavy. Um, it can bring up a lot of emotions and the intuitive voice can also bring up a lot of emotions, but it will feel like, um, like it's guiding you and it will make you feel kind of anchored and grounded into your body. Yeah, that's, um, that's really helpful. The way I describe it is like my intuition is, is more of a whisper. Like you say, it kind of like Mm -hmm. will speak once and then go. And I'm like, is that it? Whereas, you know, the ego and the fear is just nonstop madness. And because we live in such a sort of linear, logical world, like it's hard to listen to that quieter voice that's kind of gone after just speaking at once. And it's, and like you say, it comes from somewhere like in the back, in the back of the head. That's definitely like where it resonates for me. Um, Someone told me this really interesting thing. It was basically about how, you know, animals will, sense fear they'll sense danger they'll and they'll move away they'll have that instinctive response whereas we because of like our logical linear thought with language we can like sense something that's wrong and physically feel it and just go like straight on in and it's because like the logical mind it kind of has made sense of what it wants to make sense of rather than feeling it out and being like okay, that doesn't feel right. I'm not going to do it. And it, it's, it's a hard thing. It's like a muscle. You have to learn to trust that because we want to know what's at the end of doing it the way we think we should yeah. rather than just trusting, trusting our body. And I think that the, the body for me is such a, a key component to, to the language of it all really. And I do this thing when if I'm in a situation and I had it like not that long ago, Um, where if something starts to feel off, even though like logic, linear thinking is like, this is great. This is a great situation. This is a great opportunity. Like this is where you should be and this is where we should stay. And my body will start reacting or responding. And I think, oh dear, there's there's a lot of conflict going on. And so I ask my body the question. So I'll say like, you know, we stay in this situation and we, we carry on with what the mind wants and my throat will close up the back of my neck will get prickly I'll just like every, my chest will tighten I'm like, okay that's not very good and then I'll be like okay we remove ourselves from the situation which you know is the harder thing to do in terms of it's going to disrupt things and it's going to upset people but I you know I ask my body that and everything opens you know my chest like opens my throat opens I'm like okay I guess we've got to do that and that's my way now of of knowing like which course of action to take 
Oh, yeah, the body. I love that, Kagi. That's such a good description. It's like, it's what I call like the hell yes and hell no. Mm -hmm. And really listening to what the body is communicating with you. And we're a society of people pleasers. So we don't want to upset the boat and we want to be liked by people. And so when your body is having that you know, of a physical reaction. And I love the the one that you said about the throat closing up. I get that. That's such a powerful um, representation. And I sometimes get that when I'm also not speaking my truth. Um, so yeah, I mean, our whole body is intuitive. And I think we, we're we also, uh, you know, for many of us, we're not in tune with our bodies or our emotions and we can find them very overwhelming. And so this is a part of a journey where we are being asked to kind of get back in, in touch with our feelings, with our emotions and the hell yes, heck no. Like, you know, it's a really great, simple tool. But if you've got a, a question that you really want to like ask, you like imagine the question in white light, like in yeah. your in your head or imagine it in front of you um, and then kind of wrap green light around it and um, like breathe the question into your heart space and say and, you know, and call your spirit team forward and, and ask, like, is this a hell yes or is this a heck no? And just see how it feels in the body. Like the hell yes will normally, you know, give you full body chills. Um, you might even see like a green light for go. That's how I get it. Um, I see like a green, um, a green go sign. Um, and it just feels really good. But when I, I get a heck no, it's really obvious in the body, like the energy shuts off. I see like a red stop sign and, and it is, um, we, we all can do that. And it's, it's about kind of working out what that looks like for us and noticing how the, how that shows up in the body. Yeah. In a sort of like a similar vein to this, I want to talk a little bit about red flags. Like we've all had those situations in relationships where like there have been a lot of red flags and I, I jokingly say that I just make them into bandanas and like carry on <laughs> um and it took it took a pretty like harsh lesson actually at the end of my Saturn return to be like okay I'm not ignoring the red flag anymore and mm. when people then gaslight that that's yes. really that's really like shit because you then it's that you're sending yourself a message of like god I can't honor those feelings and I can't trust those feelings and I actually need to like push them down because, you know, that was a horrible response I got. So I'm not listening to it anymore. Mm, yeah. And then we don't trust our intuition, exactly. even though it's like the biggest hell. Yes. Um, I mean, I've had that. Um, I, in fact, it was, it was in my Saturn return. I was being cheated on and I just knew, I knew what was happening, but because I, was gaslighting told, you. I was being gaslit and I was being told no, even though my intuition was like giving me all the signs. It's but it is, it's practice, it's trust, and knowing that you know there might be consequences of taking action on your intuitive messages, but it's so it, it's you're better off taking action on the messages and being in your truth and power and knowing what the truth is versus feeling like you can't speak your truth. Or that or getting trapped in something and getting trapped into it because that's when those boulders come up. Then mm -hmm. there's going to be bigger things that come up to get you um, out of a relationship, a job, using your intuition and noticing when you are being gaslit or manipulated. Yeah, it's it's so important um, with those red flags. Totally, because I had exactly the same experience as you, and like I'm actually you know, now really grateful for it because I was just like, wow, yeah. I'm never ignoring that again. And it's, it's just, it feels like it's awakened such a powerful tool for me so that now when I've been in situations recently and I don't want to like share too much, but there was like in terms of dating, like historically the behavior that I would have thought was flattering and, oh, I'm being, you know, being so doting towards me and how isn't this so lovely to be idolized like this and everything? But my body was just like, yeah. get out. And it was so uncomfortable. The person went like completely, because I literally just said, this doesn't feel right for me in my body energetically. Like I'm, I'm removing myself, I'm leaving. And it was such a big lesson for me because 
they went completely mad. The way that they responded was so telling of like, actually, you know, how obviously not right it was. Mm. Um, and then anyway, now I'm in a situation when, where I'm with someone and they, when I speak to them about like, you know, this is coming up for me. And when that's met with open honesty and integrity and like received well, it's such a beautiful experience because that person is basically being like, you know, you are, you are right in feeling that way and, and, and I'm going to hold space for it. I would love to encourage people to be able to do that. You know, you, obviously there's the risk that someone might gaslight you, but if you do it with an invitation of like integrity and honesty, people tend to surprise you with like how, how they can meet you there. It might not be immediate, but they like want to, you know, it's like an energetic thing of up leveling. And they're like, I want to get there with you, even if that means going through some discomfort first. Sometimes we want relationships to fit a certain way or to fit into an expectation or how we visually want to see it as well. Oh. And so we don't sometimes don't want to have those conversations because it might then mean that something might end versus when we have, as you say, like we have those those curiosity moments and it's like, oh, I'm feeling this energy in this space. I'm feeling that you're, you know, you're anxious about this part of our relationship or you're, you know, are you feeling this certain way or this is how I'm feeling and I'm bringing it into this space. Mm -hmm. As you say, it, it invites that up level. And then, then that also creates more of a conscious relationship. It okay. then means that you are both feeling comfortable to bring up the feelings and the emotions and the intuitive hits that you're getting within the relationship dynamic. And that is so powerful because it, instead of bringing you further apart, which is like the human fear, actually brings you closer together. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's that, it's the sort of conundrum of, you know, we want to be seen authentically in relationship, but in order to get there, we have to be incredibly vulnerable. And then we're afraid to be vulnerable because what if we're rejected yeah. in that vulnerability? So it kind of like plays out in this, this vicious cycle because like I believe on the precipice of anything great, fear is the gatekeeper. And there's no way of like dodging that, you know, it's just like something that we have to step into. But that mm -hmm. is where like a conscious partnership lives. The truth is ultimately like all growth is rooted in pain. It's just the like that is just the reality, and that's something again that this spiritual bypass of like manifest your dream life and have everything you want, like <laughs> that's not. And I've I've you know I've gone to things where I've seen people practicing that kind of psychology or like that kind of message to to people that are hurting and that are vulnerable, and I'm like this is dangerous because. You can't bypass those emotions, nor should you want to, because that is where the magic and like the essence of everything lies. Yeah, it's where the healing is. And it's, you know, yeah, you can't push it down. And just by focusing on the love and light, it's like, that's not going to get you where you want to go. Like, that's just those things are going to continue to keep coming up. And, and we're always on a healing journey. Or, you know, even then when you think you've got your shit together, and you think that you've got everything, you know, happening it's like, yeah, you know, my job's going well, I'm in this amazing relationship. Yeah. There's always going to be something that comes up. It's just a about oh I'm I'm now going deeper into my healing I'm now like mm. peeling the 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 you know the onion back even more all the layers and, and when we become to realize that there is no end game of the healing mm. it takes the pressure off like you say to to surrender a little bit to that process and to be kind and curious in that inquiry of self you know like when things are going really well and then something else happens you're like but why has this happened and why am I behaving like that? And just be like, oh, this is interesting. This is still something that I need to like work on or learn from or like whatever. It's just being being light, I guess, in the heavier stuff. And I think that's that part of that intuition is like noticing the themes and the patterns that keep coming up in your life. Mm -hmm. That's intuition. Those themes and patterns, whether they keep repeating themselves 
Um, you know, if say, for example, trust keeps coming up in your relationships and also in your, you know, work colleagues or, you know, general levels of trust, it's like, okay, well, let me look beneath that. And if that's a theme that keeps coming up in my life, that's an intuitive message for me to, um, look at some of my, um, belief systems. my subconscious belief systems. And then I then talk about, you know, healing your ancestor story that a lot of the time we're also holding on to the patterns and blocks and themes that come from our ancestors, from our parents, from our grandparents, from our great grandparents and lineage before that, that, you know, we're holding on to subconscious beliefs based on what they faced in their lives, um, in our life today. And when we start to look and unpack that, it's like, oh, I've been, you know, running this kind of, you know, subconscious belief system, which I didn't even realize was, I was holding on to. How do we go about unpacking that? Yeah. So for me, um, personally, the ancestral work, um, is say, for example, you know that there's a lot of things to do with like trust in relationships and then you realize and you look back and you're like oh yeah well my I know from my mum that she was cheated on twice and and there was a divorce in a relationship like you so you firstly you can if you can you can ask your family if that's a if that's something that you can do to like ask questions about like what was their life like growing up what were the challenges that they faced what do you feel like your biggest learning is on this planet like in your lifetime what's been your biggest learning it can bring up so much and it's also important to share that you can also do this if you um are adopted or you um had another caregiver in your life because it's not just our familial line as well we can take on the ancestor story of like the people that looked after us as well um and we can take on the the themes you know around our money story our relationship with money how we receive love it can be sometimes like, why do I feel like I don't relate to anything connected to home? Or I feel like I'm not settled or grounded in a home. And then you realize that, oh, well, you know, my parents, they moved around a lot. They didn't have a home. Funny that you say that, actually, because I, I've always had this thing of like loving moving abroad, new cities, like there isn't even an ounce of fear. And a lot of people send me messages about it because they're like, oh my God, I want to move, but I'm scared. And especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, people are like, why would you want to like uproot and just like change location? But for me, that like I get something out of that energy, but also it probably ties into like my family nest, you know, falling apart when I was a teenager and not having that space of like home and that family. So it's meant that like, I actually find familiarity and and safety in like never being too settled somewhere. And that applies like to my career, to my relationships and to my like physical home is that when things get too, when things have been going on, like for too long, I depart. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not like I think, oh, this is getting a bit good and feeling a bit secure, so I'm going to ruin it. (laughs) It's just more of a like a a thing of this feels unfamiliar, um, and like I'm scared of, I guess, of like feeling safe in it or like things feeling cemented because Mm -hmm. I'm not used to that. So I'm used to like this flighty, like you know, everything's at the beginning stages because that's what I can control, if that makes sense. So I feel like I'm suddenly in a therapy session. Like I always do in this podcast. (laughs) No, and and that's all I I love it because my my work and how my client sessions go, I mean, it is is like therapy. (laughs) But that's why like this anchoring, this grounding energy is going to be so important for you. Like I know we set, you know, off from the start, we talked about like how anchoring your energy is going to be really key for you. And so it is going to be, um, like as you move through the next phase in the chapter of your life is like you making roots and being anchored ironically is a thing that you're going to need the most during this time and it's going to feel really counterintuitive because you are going to want to like right. okay it's time to move oh it's kind to change that it's time to it but it's going to make you kind of sit in the uncomfortableness of being anchored and grounded in one space and what that feels like and that's oh, going to wow. be some, like really deep 
powerful healing that happens because you're not going to be able to use the survival mode or mechanism that you've done in the past to kind of mix things up. Wow. I feel like that is exactly what I needed to hear this evening. I just got like full body chills when you said it. It was like, oh, I think because it's been, you know, that restless unease I'm feeling in myself of like change, sh- shape shift, you know, it's like a shape shifting thing of that's my, that's my like mechanism for staying mm-hmm. safe. And yeah. I think, yeah, my challenge now is to, is to remain as I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is yeah. bloody terrifying. <laughs> yeah, and 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 being, um, yeah, and that kind of being in that surrender and being in that patience and kind of releasing the time frame. I know that, you know, we're all wanting things to to move and to change, and we're we're very kind of stuck in the time frame of things, and just they're like it's not going to happen overnight like it happened in the past. It's mm. going to be a slow burn, but this slow burn is going to be more rooting, more grounding, more anchoring, and it's going to be something that you can keep coming back to versus something that burns quick and then disappears. They're like, that's not what Kagi's about now. This is about like the fire that you can build that's sustainable, that's anchoring, and that makes you feel in your like firepower. Wow. I love that because it is so relevant to like every aspect of my life right now. This is really good. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, (laughs) (laughs) There was a question that came to me and I was like, not really sure where it came from, but why are we afraid of our power? Mm, Yeah. Great question. I know. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. And I'm like, (laughs) I have no idea how you're going to answer that. But I just like something in me was like, ask her this question. (laughs) <laughs> That's a really good intuitive question. Thank you, guides. Um, <laughs> we are afraid of our power because we're afraid of our potential and we're actually afraid of our truth. We're afraid of our inner knowing and our power for change and transformation. And a lot of the time we fear change and we fear transformation and we fear our truth. And so by fearing our truth, we fear our own power. And I think we um, are in this time of change and transformation and that where we are being reconnected to our power. And it's, it's the realization that we all have access to it and that that's really important for during this time. But it is, it's so conditioned in us for us not to be in our power, but it's mm. about not trusting our truth because the truth scare the truth can be scary the truth can bring up a lot the truth can bring bring out can bring change um but the truth and coming back to the inner truths of our own inner knowing and that own inner guidance is so deeply powerful and we do we fear our own power because we don't see ourselves as powerful but we really are i think that's that's perfect and also i guess what comes with that is the unknowing so it's like the the fear of actually having to let go of of something we thought we knew and we actually realized that perhaps that wasn't it after yeah all. and trusting the journey trusting the journey and then and knowing that it might not make sense at the time but you're going to look back in uh, you know a week a month a year 3 years 5 years and be like oh didn't make sense at the time, but now this all makes complete sense. And I see why that had to happen. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. I'm so glad we got to speak, although it was a little hard. (laughs) We made it happen. Let's hope it saves. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and You know, I've thought about this episode a lot after recording it and so many things Natalie said, especially about, you know, my personal journey with, uh, you know, the space that I'm in, how to ground myself and all these things, because it's a daily discipline checking in. Even like I find myself sometimes thinking that caffeine can kind of, I don't know, distract me from my inner knowing and because it kind of speeds up the mind, if that makes sense. And we need to quiet that chatter to really know and listen out for that quieter voice, that inner knowing. 
And, you know, I often think of femininity as, and I think all of us do, as this light and gentle, girly thing. But I'm beginning to realize that it's, it's also quite fiery and sometimes dark. And I think it's, I'm beginning to own and access those parts of myself, but it's a bigger energy. And I kind of, this is like making me question like why and where do I keep myself small and who am I trying to please in doing so? Because I think we are so used to having to shape shift to suit certain environments and to kind of go by unnoticed. And so I hope that this kind of encourages and calls you to take up a little bit more space, you know, take up a bit more space in your energy and, and, and in who you are. If you want to follow me on social media, you can find me at Kaggy's World. And our astrological guide, Nora, is at Stars Incline, if you'd like to get a reading. And Natalie is at I Am Natalie Miles. This podcast has grown through word of mouth, so please continue to share it with your friends or anyone that you think might find it useful. And leave us a review on Apple, because this helps us get discovered by more like-minded individuals. If you would like to join our growing community, you can find us on Patreon at Saturn Returns with Kagi. Saturn Returns is a Feast Collective production. The producer is Scarlett O'Mary, and the executive producer is Kate Taylor. Until next time, thank you so much for listening, and remember, you are not alone. <laughs>